Are you a member of the caravan and motorhome club? If so, your personal details might have been stolen and being used by criminals right now. What would you do if your camper van was seized while you were still in it? Or what if you got a knock on your van door in the middle of the night while overnighting in a Scottish beauty spot to be told that you need to pay the tourist tax. Well, it's all coming up in this month's motorhome and campervan news, where we have the Scottish Highland councillors up in arms about the exclusion of the tourist tax on campervans overnight parking. The schoolboy who steals a caravan and drives it down the M1 during his maths lesson. The man who has his camper van seized by the DVLA while he was still sleeping in it. NC500 rangers get the axe so you'll have to pick up your own sh from now on. And the caravan and motorhome club gets hacked forcing them to shut down all their systems. But first, these are the shocking images of an American RV style motorhome on fire on Seaford Seafront. Four fire appliances were used. There is no information about how it happened, only that it was accidental and there are no casualties. Five people living in their vans have been evicted by Norfolk County Council for staying on South Beach Parade in Great Yarmouth. Two of them have now moved into hostel accommodation. One of them said that he had been living there for seven years but decided to accept the hostel accommodation because his van was cold, damp and riddled with rats. They had chewed through wires and pipes and even got into his bed. Something to cuddle up to during the cold nights, isn't it? The other three vans will have to be moved, but were informed that they'll also be told to move from there too. Police have recovered a stolen motorhome worth about £47,000 in Roxwell near Chelmsford. They say they had been stolen overnight from Sybil Headingham, which is 25 miles away. Now you've probably heard about this next one because it was on the TV news. North Yorkshire police managed to recover a stolen caravan on the M1. 45 minutes after it was reported as stolen, the BMW X5 towing the caravan was pulled over, but when the officers approached the car, they had the shock of their lives as they discovered an 11 year old boy in the driver's seat. The caravan was stolen from a campsite in Thirsk, 40 miles away, and the owner of the caravan, seeing it being driven away, called the police immediately. The boy was detained and questioned by police and released on bail because it was past his bedtime and it was a school night. A comedian living in his VW camper van has had it seized by the DVLA while he was still sleeping in it in Leek. The camper van had no tax, no insurance or MOT and it was impounded with all its documentation and his ID inside. Which means that even if he had the money to pay for the release fee, he wouldn't be able to prove it was his because he wouldn't be allowed to enter the camper van to collect the documents. Catch 22. He was arrested for suspicion of public order offences and was released eight hours later without charge. The release fee started at £500 and increased every day. That was just before the new year. A couple of weeks later, and with the help from his fans and his gran, he managed to rescue his VW from being sold at an auction. If you are a caravan and motorhome club member, then you may already be aware that the club was hacked in January and that your personal data may have been stolen. When the club noticed the security breach, they shut down all their systems and went about performing a cyber security investigation. So if you had tried to book a pitch online during that time, then you would have found out that it wasn't possible. A few weeks later, and they found that data on policies from 2018 to 2024 for May Day breakdown insurance, caravan insurance and caravan cover, as well as claims for red pennant emergency assistance may have been accessed. 
The club's cybersecurity team cannot confirm that any member data has been accessed, stolen, or is being used in an unauthorized manner. More information can be found in the email from the club dated around 8th of February. Pembrokeshire Council has agreed to a trial to allow motomes and campervans to stay and sleep overnight in four of its car parks. These car parks are North Beach in Tembe, Goodwick Moor in Goodwick, Townsmore in Narberth, and Western Way in Pembroke Dock. There will be a fee of £10 per night with a maximum stay of two nights. The trial is called PEM Stops and will run for 18 months from July 2024. The council stressed that the intention of the trial isn't to make campsites because you won't be allowed to use or store anything outside of your motorhome, including gas bottles, tables and chairs, and emptying or rubbish facilities will not be provided. Fife Council may introduce overnight parking fees to five of its beauty spots. They have already introduced overnight parking fees to 10 other beauty spots, so adding these extra five will probably go ahead in my opinion. The current sites are East Lomond, Craig Mead, Burnie Lock, Wormit Bay, Glenvale, Lime Kilns, Kings Barnes, Ellie Rugby Bay, Pitt and Weem, and uh, uh, <laughs> One million zillion jillion dillion cotillion times later. Pitt and Weem and Abador Silver Sands. The new locations will be Levin Promenade, Petticure Bay, St Andrews East Sands, Burnt Island and Tayport. Money raised from the fees will be used to update the facilities at these locations. So, how much are they charging, I hear you say? Subject to change, the first two hours will be free. All day will be £1 and overnight will be £10. Disabled users are exempt from the charges. Now, it's easy to think that this is another council getting greedy and getting on the charging for overnight parking bandwagon, but I see this as positive news. It means that they are taking notice and want to find a solution to overcrowding of camper vans at beauty spots. If this means charging for the pleasure and improving facilities, parking spots and having official rangers monitoring these locations, then that's all fine. But let me know what you think in the doobly-doo. In January, the Scottish Government voted to introduce a tourist tax. The idea being that people staying in hotels, B&Bs and campsites, etc. would have to pay an extra charge. However, any camper vans or motorhomes overnight parking would not have to pay. The reason for this was that it'd be too difficult to collect the money. And according to Visit Scotland, the problem would then be which council to send the collected tax to since motorhomes can move across council areas. Some of you commented on my last video saying that this would mean fewer vanners will use campsites and overnight somewhere else to avoid the tax. Two Scottish councillors also came to this conclusion and are pushing the Highland Council to protest the Scottish Government's decision. A couple of ideas that they've considered include using a number plate recognition system and also a motorhome passport scheme where you'd have to volunteer to pay £40 to have a bumper sticker to stick to your lovely paintwork. Personally, I can't see either idea working. I can't see people volunteering to pay for a sticker. Well, maybe if it was something you can collect each year, but then what's stopping someone copying them and selling them on eBay? As for the number plate recognition system, I think it would be too costly. They would have to install them on every road which connects the different council areas together, or install them in patrolling rangers' cars which will require employing more rangers instead of getting rid of them, which is what they are doing. I know some of you will now be avoiding Scotland due to the tourist tax, but it is more common than you think. Many European countries do it, including France, Germany, Spain, 
Austria and many others, ranging from paying to enter the country to paying to enter a city. Next year, the EU will charge non-EU citizens to enter the Shenzhen zone. And this year, the UK will introduce a travel tax for people visiting from the US, Europe, Australia and Canada. No one likes to pay tax, but I'd love to know your thoughts. Put them in the doobly-doo. Now about those Highland Rangers I just mentioned. In 2021, the Seasonal Access Ranger Service was created to help prevent dirty camping in the Highlands, specifically along the NC500 route. Locals were complaining about tourists leaving litter and human waste along the route, which I really don't understand why people, can we call them people, would do such a thing. The Rangers tasks include patrolling and maintaining the sites, and educating visitors of the outdoor access code. However, it's going to come to an end. From the 29th of March, eight rangers' contracts are not going to be renewed. The reason for this is because of funding. Of course, some of the locals are not happy, saying, when you think back, it was absolutely horrific. There were tents everywhere, camper vans and fires. It was a desperate situation. The rangers have made a real difference, but the problems have not gone away. Why am I telling you all this? Well, I think it's about time we should educate other vanners of the proper, no, the humane way to stay in a camper van and appreciate the countryside and those locals lucky enough to live in such a beautiful place. You can't rely on the authorities to do it for us because they can't be everywhere. If you see someone emptying their human waste, dropping litter or starting a fire, then either inform them that they shouldn't be doing it or report them. Now, I'm, not, I'm not saying start an argument or put yourself in any danger. That, that should be avoided at all costs. But people, yes, I'm still calling them people, shouldn't be tipping their sh** into the countryside for others to discover or for it to leach into the waterways. Yes, but animals do it all the time. And I say exactly, you animal. What are your thoughts on this matter? Or maybe you have an idea on how to educate others on the problem. For more motorhome news, watch these videos here and subscribe to get updates. Thanks for watching and goodbye.